Next Chapter Podcasts. Next Chapter Podcasts presents the play on podcast series, The Winter's Tale. Episode 3, It is the Heretic that Makes the Fire. For the best listening experience, be sure to use headphones or earbuds. And remember, it is required you awake your faith. Friendship far is mingling bloods. Is he won yet? Uh, he'll stay, my lord. At my request, he would not. <laughs> They're gossiping already, whispering, giggling. Leontes is a cuckold. All night, all day, no rest. It is my weakness that it burdens me this way, mere weakness. If I could erase the cause, part of the cause, she the adulteress, for the player king is fled, out of my reach, abolished from the workings of my brain and heart. But she, I can reel to me. What if she were gone, thrown in the fire? A modicum of my rest might come to me again. Who's there? My lord. How does my son? He's had good rest tonight. It's hoped his sickness will discharge. No! No, Mom! Mom! His strength collapsed at the unmasking of his mother. He instantly declined and took it deeply, appeared to take her shame upon himself, sank in his spirit, his appetite, his sleep, and thoroughly languished. Leave me alone. Go check on him. Who does infect her? Polixenes! We were like twin lambs that did frisk in the sun and bleat the one at the other. Forget your former friend. The very thought of my revenge that way recoils upon me. He's himself too mighty. So, in the shade of his allegiance, let him hide until the time is right for present vengeance. Take it on her. <laughs> Camillo and Polixenes laugh at me, make a hobby of my sorrow. They would not laugh if I could hook them. Nor will she, within my power. You must not enter. No, my good men. Don't bar my way to him. You fear his cruel passions reign more than our good queen's life? Her gracious, innocent soul's more pure than he is jealous. That's enough. Wife, he has not slept tonight. Commanded none should come to him. Not so rough, dear spouse. I've come to bring him sleep. Whereas you all, who creep like shadows round him and will jump whenever he will whine. Whereas you all nourish the cause of his insomnia. I've come with words as medicinal as true, candid as both, to purge him of that sickness that hinders him from sleep. What noise there, huh? No noise, my lord, but needful conference about some matters with your highness. What? Away with that audacious lady. Antigonus, I charge you that your wife not come round me. I knew she would. I told her so, my lord, at your displeasure's peril, and mine too. She should not visit you. Well, can't you rule her? From bad behavior, he can. But in this, unless he takes the course that you have and constricts me from committing honor, trust it. He shall not rule me. Ah, uh, now, 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 now. <laughs> when she will take the reins, I let her run. But she'll not stumble. Your Highness, I've come, and I implore you, hear me. One who calls herself your loyal servant, your physician, your most obedient counselor, yet who dares appear less so in comforting your evils than these appear to do. I say, I've come from your good queen. Good queen? Good queen, my lord. Good queen, I I say good queen, and I would fight to prove she's good were I a man the least among you. Guards, 
Take her out. Come with us, lady. Come on. Hello. Let him that makes mere trifles of his eyes lay hands on me. I'll leave by my own footing. Uh, uh, but first I'll do my errand. The good queen, for she is good, has brought you forth a daughter. Here she is. The good queen requests your blessing. Oh, tag! You witch! Get out of here, I say, you devious, deceitful spy! Not so. I am as ignorant in that as you are in accusing me, and no less honest than you are mad, which is enough, I suppose, as this world goes, to pass for honest. Traitors! Will you not push her out? Uh, Give her the bastard, Antigonus. Are you so cowed, unmanned by your old clucking hen? Pick up the bastard. Pick it up, I say. Give it to your crone. Uh, Forever contaminated are your hands if you pick up the princess by that foul name that he has put upon it. Uh, <laughs> he dreads his wife. As I wish you did, then you wouldn't claim your children were not yours. A nest of traitors! I'm none to this, I swear! Nor I, nor any, but one that's here, and that's himself. Oh. For he, the sacred honor of himself, his queen, his brightest son, his babe, betrays to slander, whose sting is sharper than a sword's, and will not, for it appears to me that he's transfixed and stuck. <laughs> for as it stands, he won't dig up the root of his opinion, which is rotten as ever oak or stone was sound. A shrew of boundless tongue, who has browbeat her husband and now baits me. This brat is none of mine. It is the offspring of Polixenes. Out with it, and together with its mother, commit them to the fire. It is yours, and so like you, we may have cause to doubt she'll grow up sound of mind. Wow. <laughs> Behold, my lords, although the print is little, the lettering's a copy of the father. Eyes, nose, lips, the angles of your frown. <laughs> His forehead and the pretty dimples of your chin and cheek. Your smile. <laughs> the very mold and frame of hand, nail, finger. And you, great goddess of nature, who has shaped her so like him that made her, if you've shaped the makeup and colors of her mind, put no green in it, so she won't think as he does, her children not her own. She's talk! Gross hag! And, Geezer, you are worthy to be hanged if you'll not shut her mouth. Well, hang all the husbands that cannot do that feat. You'll leave yourself hardly one subject. <laughs> Once more, take her out! A most unworthy and unnatural lord can do no more. I'll have you burned. I care not. It is the heretic that makes the fire, not she who burns in it. I'll not call you tyrant, but in this most cruel treatment of your queen, unable to produce more evidence than your weak hinged fantasy, there is a whiff of tyranny, and it will make you vile and scandalous to the world. On your allegiance, guards out of my chamber with her. Were I a tyrant, where were her life? She would not call me one if she did know me one. Away with her! Come on. I ask that you not push me. I'll be gone. Tend to your babe. She's yours. I pray she finds a kinder caregiver. Come along now. Why force me out? You men that play the nanny to his follies will never do him good. Not one of you. So, farewell. We are done. You, traitor, have set on your wife to this. My child, away with it. And you, that has a heart so tender for it, take it out and have it instantly consumed with fire. M oh. You and none but you shall perform this task. Within this hour, bring me word tis done and with strong proof, or I will seize your life and all who you call yours. If you refuse and choose to grapple with my wrath, say so. The bastard's brains with these my proper hands I will dash out. Go, take it to the fire, for you've spurred on your wife.
I did not, sir. These lords, my noble fellows, if they please, can clear me of it. I can, most royal liege. I swear Antigonus knew none of this. You're liars all. We ask your grace to give us better credit. We've always truly served you, and we ask in turn for you to value us. And so we beg, as recognition of our loyalties past and present, that you refrain from this intent which, being so depraved, will surely result in some catastrophe. We kneel. Oh. I am a feather for each wind that blows. Shall I live on to see this bastard kneel and call me father? Better burn it now than curse it then. But even still, let it live. I shall do neither. Antigonus, come here to me. Oh. You that have been so meekly meddlesome with Lady Shrew, your nagging midwife there, to save this bastard's life. And it's a bastard, as sure as your beard's gray. What would you do to save this brat's life? Anything, my lord, that my ability may undertake a nobleness allow, at least this much, I'd pawn what little blood that I have left to save this innocent. Anything possible. It shall be possible. Oh. Swear by this sword you will perform my bidding. I, I will, my lord. Mark and perform it, do you hear? For the fail of any point in't shall not only be death to yourself, but to your lewd-tongued wife, who for the time we pardon. Oh. We charge you, as you are loyal to us, that you carry this female bastard out, and that you take it to some remote and desert place quite out of our dominion, and that there you leave it without more mercy to its own protection and favor of the climate. As by strange fortune it came to us, I do injustice charge you on your soul's peril and your body's torture that you escort it to some far-off place where fate will nurse or end it. Pick it up! I swear to do this, though a present death would have been more merciful Come on, poor babe. Perhaps some god will charge the hawks and ravens to be your nursemaids. Wolves and bears, they say, casting their savageness aside, have done similar acts of pity. <laughs> Sir, may you prosper in more than this deed does deserve. I pray that fate is on her side against this cruelty. Poor child, condemned to die. <laughs> No, I'll not raise another's child. Please, your highness, some news from those you sent to the oracle was brought an hour ago. Cleomenes and Dion have safe arrived from Delphos, are nearby, hastening to the court. So please you, sir, their speed has been the swiftest known. Twenty-three days they have been absent. Tis good speed. A sign that great Apollo immediately had the truth of this appear. Prepare you, lords. Summon a trial, so that we may arraign our most disloyal lady. For as she has been publicly accused, so shall she have a just and open trial. Though while she lives, my heart will be a burden to me. Go, and look to do my bidding. As you wish, my lord. How long have we to search I can't believe it. Hey, Play On Podcast listeners, I want you to be a part of the cast. Become a supporting cast member with Play On Podcasts for just $5 a month. Get in-depth interviews featuring some of the most brilliant artists working today. I talk to actors, playwrights, directors, and producers from the worlds of theater and Hollywood, pulling back the curtain on why they got into their profession, why these stories are so relevant today and providing context on the process of making these plays in the podcast format. You'll enjoy ad-free episodes of the Play On podcast series, and maybe even a gift or two. Head over to playonpodcasts.com, click Supporting Cast, and join the club today. We so love creating this content for you, and we hope you'll support us so we can bring you inside this rejuvenated, reimagined Shakespearean world. 
Join the cast. Supporting cast. Go to ncpodcasts.com. The climate was delicate, the air was sweet, the isle was fertile, and the temple surpassed its lofty reputation. I shall report, for it impressed me, the celestial garments worn by the priests with somber reverence, and, oh, the sacrifice of sacred animals, how ceremonious, solemn, and unearthly they were in the offering. But above all, the boom! And the ear-deafening voice of the oracle like heaven's thunder so astounded me that I was dumbstruck. If the outcome of the journey proves as successful for the queen, pray it will, as it's been for us pleasant, speedy, and strange. It's been well worth our time. Great Apollo, turn all things to the best. These accusations and forced faults placed upon Hermione I do not like. Our offering of this shall save or sink her spirit, when the oracle, now by Apollo's holy priest sealed up, shall be unsealed and read aloud to all, its wisdom will come clear. Ride on, fresh horses, and may good truth be known. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At this trial, to our great grief we summon, though it pierces our heart, the defendant, the daughter of a king, our wife, and one of us too much beloved. Let us be cleared of being tyrannous, since we so openly proceed to justice, which shall have due course, ending with the guilt or the acquittal. Bring forth the prisoner. It is His Highness's pleasure that the Queen appear in person here in court. Silence! Read the indictment. Hermione, queen to the worthy Leontes, king of Sicilia. You are hereby accused and will stand trial for high treason in committing adultery with Polixenes, king of Bohemia and for conspiring with the servant Camillo to murder our sovereign lord, the king, your royal husband. The plan having been in part exposed by recent events, let it also be shown that you, Hermione, contrary to the faith and allegiance of a true subject, did conspire to aid those two in their escape from justice. Since all that I can say is only that which contradicts my accusation, and the testimony on my behalf, none but what comes from myself, it hardly helps to say not guilty. My integrity, being heard as falsehood, shall, as I speak to it, be so received. Except, if powers divine behold our human actions, and they do, I do not doubt my innocence will make false accusation blush and tyranny tremble at patience. You, my lord, best know, who least appear to know, that my past life had been as continent, as chaste, as true, as I am now unhappy, which is more than any tragic play, as this one is, performed to please the audience. Look at me, a partner of the royal bed who claims a portion of the throne, a great king's daughter and mother of a noble prince, here standing to plead and beg for life and honor for whoe'er it please to sit and watch. My worth is equal to my grief, which tallies high. My honor is passed from me onto mine, and it's for them I stand here. I appeal to your own memory, sir. Before Polixenes came to your court, how I was in your grace, and how worthy to be so. Since he left, I have been handed names and traits so dire that they transport me here. If I'm one speck beyond the bound of honor in act or thought that way inclining, hardened be the hearts of all that hear, and may my son and babe shout curses on my grave. 
they who have sin enough to do their heinous deeds need less sin to deny them. Yes, that's true enough, though it's an adage, sir, not apt for me. You will not own it? More than being mistress of what's been thrust upon me baselessly, I can't claim ownership. For Polixenes, with whom I am accused, I do confess I loved him as his situation did require. With such a kind of love as might become a lady like me, with a love as large as you yourself commanded, and no more. Which not to have done, I think, would have shown both disobedience and ingratitude to you and toward your friend, whose love had spoke since it could speak from an infant freely that it was yours. As for conspiracy, I know not how it tastes, though it be dished for me to try now. All I know of it is that Camillo was an honest man, and why he fled your court, the gods themselves, knowing no more than I, are ignorant. You knew of his departure, as you know what you have undertained to do in his absence. Sir, you speak a language I don't understand. My life's become the target of your dreams, and I'll surrender. Your actions fill my dreams. You had a bastard by Polixenes, and I but dreamed it. Because you feel no shame, those of your kind often don't. What's more, because you selfishly cling to your lies, for this, your brat has been cast out, left to die alone, no father owning it, the fault for which is laid precisely at your feet. And you will feel our justice, the most merciful form of which will be to die. Sir, spare your threats. The bug which you would fright me with, I seek. For me, life has become a worthless thing. The greatest treasure of my life, your favor, I count it lost, for I can feel it gone, but don't know why it went. My second joy and first fruit of my body, from his presence, I'm barred like one infectious. My third comfort, born most unfortunate, is from my breast the innocent milk in her most innocent mouth torn off and murdered. Myself on every street proclaimed a strumpet. With immodest hatred, the rest that follows birth denied, which belongs to women of all stations. Lastly, hurried here to this place in the open air before I have the strength to stand up. Now, my liege, tell me what blessings I have here alive that I should fear to die. Therefore proceed, although do not mistake, not for my life I prize it not a bit, but for my honor which I would free. If I'm to be condemned by sheer conjecture, all proof sleeping other than what your jealousy awakens, I say it's rigor, but not justice. So, your honors, I offer myself up to the oracle. Apollo be my judge. This your request is altogether just. Therefore bring forth, and in Apollo's name, his oracle. You too shall swear upon this sword of justice that you, Cleomenes and Dion, have both been to Delphos, and from there have brought this sealed up oracle presented to you by great Apollo's priest, and that since then you have not dared to break the holy seal, nor read the contents of it. All, All this, this we, we swear. swear. Break through the seal and read. Hermione is chaste. <gasps> Polixenes, blameless. Camillo, a true subject. Leontes, a jealous tyrant. His innocent babe, truly begotten. And the king shall live without an heir if that which is lost be not found. No! 
How blessed be the great Apollo! Praised! Have you read truth? Yes, my lord. Just the way that it is here, read down. There is no truth at all in the oracle. This trial shall proceed. This is some witchcraft. My lord, the king! My lord! What is the matter? Oh, sir, I curse what I'm about to say. The prince, your son, stunned from his dread and fear of the queen's fate, is gone. How gone? Is dead. Oh. Oh. Queen! Oh. The queen! Oh. The queen. Oh. Play On podcast series, The Winter's Tale, was translated into modern English verse and directed by Tracy Young. The cast is as follows. Elijah Alexander as Leontes. Kayla Carter as Perdita and Amelia. Gina Daniels as Hermione, Mopsa, Shepherd Servant, and Paulina Stewart. Rodney Gardiner as Polixenes. Elijah Goodfriend as Mamilius. Ian Gould as Clown, Lord, and Gentleman. Christopher Jean as Antigonus, Old Shepherd, Servant, Lord, and Rogero. Jim Lickscheidel as Autolycus, Jailer, Cleomenes, Officer, and Lord. Christopher Livingston as Florizel and Servant. KT Vogt as Paulina and Dorcas. Lisa Volpe as Camillo, Dion, Older Lady in Waiting, and Gentleman. Featuring Estelle Parsons as Time. Casting by the Telsey Office. Karen Castle, CSA, and Ada Karamanian. Voice and text coach, Julie Foe. Episode scripts were adapted and produced by Katherine Eaton. Original music composition, sound design, and mix by Lindsay Jones. Music direction by Andrew Fox. Sound engineering by Sadaharo Yagi and Kabi Kabakov. Mix engineer and dialogue editor, Larry Walsh and Robert McNabb. Podcast mastering by Greg Cortez at New Monkey Studio. Coordinating producer, Transcend Streaming, Kira Bowie and Liana Keys. Managing producer, Robert Cappadona. Executive producer, Michael Goodfriend. The Managing Director of Business Operations and Partnerships at Next Chapter Podcasts is Sally Cade Holmes. The Play On Podcast Series, The Winter's Tale, is produced by Next Chapter Podcasts and is made possible by the generous support of the HITS Foundation. Visit ncpodcasts.com for more about the Play On Podcast Series. Visit playonshakespeare.org for more about Play On Shakespeare. Hear more about the Play on Shakespeare podcast series by subscribing to Play on Premium at ncpodcasts.com, where you'll find interviews with the artists, producers, and engineers who brought it all to life. And remember, it is required you do awake your faith. Next Chapter Podcasts.